from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to the discussion of Parshaki Tetze, Kabbalistic reading of sending away the mother bird. We know that in Parshaki Tetze there are many mitzvot. It's one of the greatest collections of mitzvot in all the Torah. And one is the sending of the mother bird. If you're on the, on the road, not in your own chicken coop that you have in your house, but you're on the road and on the path, you happen to bump into a, a tree or a nest where there's a bird, a uh, mother bird. You want the eggs, you want the chicks. Don't take the chicks and the mother. Take, send away the mother bird, and then you can take everything else. If you do that, things will be good for you, and you will have length of days. In this world, the next world, special reward is promised. Rashi points out that if you get reward for this simple mitzvah of shooing a bird, surely you get great reward for all the mitzvahs that we do, certainly more difficult mitzvot. The question is, why send away the mother bird? Firstly, is it an obligation to send away every mother bird every time you bump into a nest? Or is it just something you need to do if you want to take the, the, the birds? And secondly, well, what's the purpose of this mitzvah? Now, first blush, it seems like this is a very compassionate mitzvah. Rather than taking mother and the, and the child, send away the mother bird. It seems similar to Otove uh, Epino, Lotichatubiomechad. Not slaughtering a, 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 a an animal and its child in one day, seeming seemingly a matter of mercy. Uh, similarly, we have uh, How can you see the goat in its mother's milk? Uh, also, a certain sensitivity to the family d- dynamics, even of an animal. However, Mishnah says very explicitly in Brachot that anyone who would make a prayer that says. God, just as you have mercy on the mother bird, so may you have mercy on us, implying that the reason for this mitzvah is mercy on the mother bird. We shut him up. We, we tell him to cease and desist from such a prayer. You cannot make such a prayer. Why not? So there are various options. One is that we're not allowed to give reasons for the mitzvot, unlike the Sefer HaChinuch and the Rambam and the Morn of Uchim, and the Rambam in many places in the Mishnah Torah, Maimonides, who give reason for mitzvot, perhaps this, is, this man is of the opinion, this Mishnah is of the opinion that we do not give reasons for mitzvot. The Rambam suggests that perhaps it's a minority opinion. Others say you could give reasons for mitzvot. Second option is that there's nothing wrong with giving reasons for mitzvot, but rather that, uh, that we don't know for sure. And therefore to say to God in a prayer that we know why you commanded this, and therefore have mercy on us in another case, that would be presumptuous of us to assume that we know the reason for mitzvot. We can, we can speculate the reason for mitzvot, but we cannot uh, affirm before God that this is the reason for mitzvah. And the third possibility mentioned by the Ramban is, is that it's, it's not, it's not it, 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 the Mishnah, that prayer has it all wrong. The notion that we're, that we're praying or saying that God has mercy on the mother bird? No. God is not as interested in the mother bird as he is in us. That by sending away a mother bird, it, it, it inculcates a certain sensitivity in us to family dynamics, to mothers, to the feelings of others. That's why we do these things. We have less of an interest in how we relate to our dog and, and we have greater interest in how you relate to human beings. We want to be kind to our dog because we want to train ourselves to be sensitive to those in need, to, the, to those who need a good meal, to the bird, to be sensitive to a mother and her feelings. But then we raise the question, is it an obligation or not? Must you do this, or is it just something that if you happen to chance upon it, you can do it? Now, many of you have cited the Zohar in relation to this question. The Zohar goes like this. Zohar very often sees the, the mitzvot, as mitzvot, but also as metaphors for other things as well. He says, what happens is, when you send away a mother bird, the mother bird goes off and cries and wails and chirps and sings a sad song and so sad that the angel in charge of birds comes and says, God, this is terrible. There's a mother bird. She's been cast off. Her children have been taken and she has no place to go and this is so sad. She's pouring out her eyes. And God says, you're worried about the birds? What about the Jewish people? The, the person who sent the, the bird away is a Jewish person and, 
And you, do you know what he's doing? The Jews have been sent off into exile. They're out of their, their, their land. They're away from their holy temple. They're away from Jerusalem. And they have no one to, to, to worry about them. They don't have an angel of birds to worry about them. And, and, and how dare you uh, think that this is the only problem in the world. The real problem is that the Jews are homeless. The Jews are not in their land. This is the great problem which we need to address. And God takes up the cause of the Jewish people. So whenever you send away a mother bird, it, God takes up the cause of the Jewish people. So according to that, if you, saw, if you saw a nest, you would want to run over to that nest and send away the mother bird and take the, take the eggs so that this great capitalistic event in heaven could go on. There is even a suggestion, I heard in the name of the Vilna Gon, that it's actually, on the contrary, we're trying to, to achieve some finite, very small act of, of, of cruelty, an, an act that has an element of cruelty to it. Why? Well, we could suggest, because we want to create this scenario with the mother bird screaming and God defending. Or, as, as the Vilna Gon implies, just like we have the mitzvah later on to destroy Amalek, to remember that we cannot be soft as a Jewish people just because we are a people who are merciful and humble, and that's what we strive to be. But we also need to remember there are times we need to fight, fight evil, defend ourselves, stand up for our, for our own rights, defend ourselves in our land. And therefore, we, we have one mitzvah, of all the mitzvot, so many of which are dedicated to, perhaps all the mitzvot are really dedicated to being kind and just, and, and, and uh, righteous and, and sensitive to others, there needs to be one mitzvah to train the human soul that there are times to, to have a little bit of, of a, har a harder edge because there are times when we need to exercise that to get, a, get around in life. We don't want the best people in the world to be so soft that they're taken over by all those who are cruel. Those who are dedicated to kindness, they too have to be able to defend themselves, to stand up for themselves. And that's what the mitzvah is all about. But according to the Kabbalistic reading, there's something going on here. It's much deeper. It's much more symbolic and metaphoric. It's the idea that you think you're worried about this bird that has no, has no, has no home, whose nest is lost, whose children are gone. What about the Jewish people? We turn to God and we say, what about the Jewish people? What about us here in Memphis, Tennessee, all around the world, outside of our natural home? What about us who have no temple in Jerusalem where we can stream and flock and gather together? What about us? Hopefully, God hears the cry, not only of the mother bird, but of the Jewish people, and the tears shed by the Jewish people throughout the ages for the rebuilding of the temple, for the ingathering of the exiles. And hopefully, through this mitzvah and our own prayers, God's taking up our cause, hopefully, will be returned one day to our nest our children will be returned to their nest as well. Thank you for joining us here at the Anche Svar Beth Lameth Congregation for a discussion of Parsha Kitetze. Join us each week for our discussion of Parsha and various holidays. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asbe.org.